leaders who can set the example for the younger ones just getting here, and that's just a continuous thing that goes on. But they see the proof, and those girls are, you know, encouraging the other yeah. girls, you know, if God did this for me, he can do this for you, and he's no respecter of persons. And, and you know, we just keep saying the same things over and over, and faith comes by hearing and that's hearing right. by the Word, that's and right. pretty soon they start believing it. Yeah, if you hear something often enough, and especially if you begin to say it yourself, Right. Then you really start to believe it. Well, Nancy, I know there's been just thousands of success stories come out of this place. And uh, is there one that comes to your mind that you might be able to tell us about? There's one that comes to my mind that uh, actually she just came and shared her testimony uh, uh, in the Nashville home and is getting ready to come to this home. Uh, but uh, I'll just kind of bullet point it for you. She was first grade dropout, severely abused by her biological family. In the uh, first grade, her, she dropped out of school? Well, her parents <laughs> told the authorities they were abusing her at home and they were getting in trouble. So they started moving around and they finally told the authorities they were homeschooling her. And I know it sounds bizarre. So it wasn't her idea to drop out. And they were they would lock her in the closet, withhold food and water, severe abuse all the way growing up, finally was removed from that family, foster home to foster home, and then detention center to detention center and finally walked through the doors of mercy when she was 15 years old turned 16 with us she could barely read or write and, and we're our deal is we're going to help a girl who's dropped out of school get her GED well our, our education director said Nancy there's no way she's too far behind she can barely read or write and I said well let's just focus on helping her heart you know helping her get restored in the Lord and healed and whole in Christ and then we'll invest in sending her to a prep school that can work with her. Well, she ended up, I'll fast forward, she took her GED, made one of the highest scores that had ever been made on wow. it, wow. and went to college because she got all these scholarships, got multiple degrees, got a double major in German and, and uh, biology, <laughs> and was awarded a Fulbright scholarship, spent two years in Germany with the medical research team because she discovered some kind of cure for something that wow. nobody could discover. And uh, today is happily married and working on her PhD. Well, God really is a restorer of all he things, is. isn't he? And he really does give us double for our trouble. God is so awesome. You know, God's all about restoring lives, and there's absolutely no one that is exempt from God's ability to bring a new beginning to them. God's word says that he will give us beauty instead of ashes, joy instead of mourning, praise instead of a heavy burden, depressed spirit. You know, this is certainly true for a young woman named Holly. God's love transformed this Mercy graduate's life from shame and self-hatred to becoming the beloved woman he created her to be. Watch this. I went to Mercy Ministries because I had struggled with an eating disorder for over five years. But for a longer period of time, I struggled with hating myself. I hated the way that I looked. I hated my personality. I was kind of quiet and shy. My family moved around a lot. Um, my sophomore year of high school, I started struggling with bulimia. Um, and at first, it didn't seem like it was a big deal. I just um, remember that thinking, that was one time, that's never gonna happen again. And then I kept telling myself, even when it was two or three days apart, and then two days apart, one day apart, and then one meal apart, you know? The harder that I tried to get over it, the worse it got. And it didn't make sense because I was a Christian, and I was doing all of um, this in the dark. You know, I was a completely different person. I would, um, you know, I would spend all my money on, on binging and purging. I would um, steal, I would lie. And I reached a point where I had failed out of a class in nursing school um, because of my eating disorder. And then I ended up dropping all of my classes. And at that point, I realized I really am messing up my life and I really need to get some help. Um, I looked around at some different places, but my parents' insurance wouldn't cover it, and so I didn't have very many options. Um, you know, I didn't have the money to pay for somewhere to go, um, and so a pastor back home uh, told me about Mercy. Mercy was the only program that really focused on Jesus being the transforming power in my life, and growing up as a Christian, I know that this is a spiritual battle. Like I knew that that was it. And I had people say, if you just try to change this about yourself, if you just try to change this, even Christian counselors are honestly like some of the different sources I encountered, which were phenomenal, but just led me in a, a path that didn't include the Holy Spirit and the work of Jesus to, to transform um, my mind and my heart. 
because of my experience at Mercy and um, my realization that freedom is possible, I do want to share with others and other women um, that that they can have the same hope that it's never too late to to start somewhere new. Well, Holly is right here with Nancy and me. Well, Holly, so far we've just heard about awful problems that you had, but I know that you've had a lot of restoration in your life. So tell me, how did being at Mercy Ministries help you? Right. Well, Mercy Ministries really helped me to gain my trust back again in God. Before Mercy, I really struggled with just understanding that God loved me, that He cared about me as an individual, and that He cared about the things that were going on in my life. And I actually had a really neat experience. It was uh, pretty soon after I arrived at Mercy. Um, one night I was just crying and I was just really mad at God and really mad for, um, I felt like He just wasn't with me for a lot of the things that I'd been through in my life. And I felt like He was distant. And so um, I will never forget in this moment, knowing that the presence of Jesus was next to me and that He was crying even more than I was about the things that I was going through. And so from that moment, just understanding that God really did care about me, that He really did love me, or had really loved me, and that really set me up for just being able to receive His love and receive the love from others, including the staff at Mercy. That's so great. Yeah. And you know, the, the thing that we want everybody to realize today is the same thing that God did for you. He wants to do for everybody that's hurting. Do you believe that, that any person with those kinds of problems or any kind of problem in their life can have the same restoration that you did? Absolutely. Yeah, I believe that that Jesus died so that we could be free. And for a long time, I had just thought that I just had to live here on earth and kind of just make it. And one day when I got to heaven, you know, I would have freedom there. Yeah. But when I came to Mercy, it was awesome because I started to realize that Jesus died so we could be free here on earth too. Yes, exactly. So, I think so many people think, well, you know, I'm going to be a Christian, so someday when I die, I can go to heaven. But eternal life begins the moment that we receive God. Right. And that word life means life as God has it. It's Zoe life. So he doesn't want us to even have life like ordinary life like we're used to. But I mean, this, this amazing, wonderful, awesome, fruitful life. So tell me, now that you've had this great change in your life, how has that how is God's purpose for your life now working out? What are you doing in your life now? Well, after I graduated from Mercy Ministries, uh, I've had the opportunity to work with a youth group. I worked with middle school and high schoolers, um, and it's been a lot of fun. It's also been a privilege to work with young girls who are going through similar issues, such as eating disorders or depression or um, self-harm, you name it. And That's so good. it's been really neat to be able to work with them. So you're um, taking your pain and turning it into other people's gain. Yes. <laughs> I love that. Yes. Well, Nancy, um, not only were you able to help her and many other girls, but how will helping Holly affect future generations? <laughs> well, you know, first of all, you know, Holly has the revelation that, that the curse is broken in Christ. So once she receives Christ, you know, for her children and her children's children. But we teach the girls that that, that, that that also, as you go out and share your story, that that, that applies as well to the, your spiritual children. We're really not alone in an island under ourselves. Each one of us affects a great number of people. And I know that I've even had my children, my four children, have come to me at different times and said, thank you for going through what you went through to learn your freedom, to learn the Word of God, because I know that my life was drastically affected by that. But even beyond that, just like you said, the, the, the spiritual children that you affect, you know, right. the people that you work with, uh, the people that you meet in the marketplace, we do affect a lot of people. And so sometimes, you know, if a person is tempted to give up, they need to realize that if I give up, I'm not just, I'm not just affecting me. You know, through the sin of one man, many were made sinners, that first man being Adam. Romans 5 teaches us this. But through the righteousness of one man, Jesus Christ, many were made righteous. And I think sometimes about the power of one choice. Wow. And how when you made the choice to come here, and then the choices that you had to make after that, and even choosing what you will do with your life now. Or Nancy, when you made the choice 
to step away from that government position that you didn't feel was really doing that much for anybody. Not not putting down, you know, a government funded program, but the truth is is they can't share the word of God and there's right. no real healing without the word of God. That's right. And so when you made that one choice to walk away from there, I'm sure you had no conception at that time of the the thousands upon thousands of lives that that would change. And we have no idea. So for people out there, you know, that are thinking about doing something for God, don't don't get hung up on, you know, what what's going to be happening 30 years from now. Just do what you're supposed to do today and walk with God one day, one step at a time, and He'll take you where you're and supposed to And I think to just to realize that every right or wrong decision that you make does affect somebody else. Yes, it does. And, you know, we, we've had a great time talking with Nancy today and, and being here at the home, and it's great to meet Holly and the other girls that, that we got to meet. But I want to make sure that that you're not just sitting there watching about all these great things in somebody else's life, because I know that many of you are hurting too. I know that. I know that you turned the program on because you need a word of encouragement. So this, this is what it is for today. Always remember that every decision you make, right or wrong, does affect a lot of people. And so when you're making your decisions today about whether to follow God or whether to maybe go off track and follow your flesh in some area or do something that you know is wrong, just remember that if you go with God, your life is going to be so much better and you're going to have an impact, a, a good positive impact on other people. You know, I counted a great privilege that Joyce Meyer Ministries is partnering with Mercy Ministries to see lives transformed. And if into our glimpse of Mercy Ministries today, your heart has been touched to see more lives unlocked by God's powerful love, then I want to encourage you to be a part of the solution through prayer and financial support. We would love to hear from you by phone or through our website. We want to continue to not only help Nancy, but many other people that are ministering to people like her. Not only do we do things ourselves, but we partner with other ministries that are helping people. I felt like what God put on my heart a long time ago is there's a lot of people that are ministering to people that really need help, but they don't have any means of getting the support that they need. Well, thankfully, God's put me in a position where I can reach out and help millions of you and then you can say, gee, that, you know, I'm so grateful for the help that I've received. And, and our natural response to that should be to want to help somebody else. So if you're feeling that right now, the word of God has helped me, I want to help somebody else. Or even if you're thinking, I need help, and so I'm going to sow into somebody else's life believing for a harvest in my own. Why don't you contact us and become part of restoring people's lives. Thank you for being with us today. God bless you. And you have a wonderful day in Jesus. When you give to Joyce Meyer Ministries Mission Outreach Hand of Hope, your donation literally goes around the world to help those who need it most. So contact us at 1-800-727-9673 or go to JoyceMeyer.org to make a donation and say, I will. And when you do, we'd like to send you the Fruit of the Spirit Action Plan as a thank you gift for your donation of any amount. Join us as we strive to relieve human suffering around the world and share the life-giving message of Jesus Christ. Thank you, friends and partners. Together, we're sharing the love of Christ around the world. To find out more, please contact us or visit us online at JoyceMeyer.org. Join us in partnership as we share the love of Christ around the globe. The proceeding was paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.